Welcome! The scope of this tutorial is to showcase to students how to install Comfy UI, a somewhat ironic name for a user interface for stable diffusion that is node-based and can be quite uncomfortable to adapt to, but which offers more flexibility and is also compatible with some plugins and extensions that are not compatible with the automatic 11.11 user interface. Now, to install Comfy UI, we'll simply follow the instructions here, with one exception. To make sure that the dependencies that we install for this user interface do not conflict with any other user interface installation, we will install the dependencies not on a system-wide level, but in a virtual environment. So, we'll go to the top here of the manual installation instructions, so as to be able to get the latest update of the user interface. So, the first thing we'll do is to git clone this repository. So let's open the folder where we want to install it. When we clone into the repository, a subfolder will be automatically created called Comfy UI. So it fits the hierarchy well here. Let's simply hold shift and right mouse button and then open PowerShell window here. Very good. And then we'll do git clone and then we'll add the URL of this. And then we add dot git and enter. So now we clone into the repository and we now see that we have a Comfy UI folder here. Very good. Now we see that the current directory is still the parent folder, so let's change the directory to the folder that we created, Comfy UI. And then, instead of immediately running this command, we'll create a virtual environment to avoid conflicts with other installed software that use the same dependencies. In this tutorial, it is assumed that you already have Python 3.10.6 installed. If you as of yet do not have it installed, then you can watch the relevant segment in the previous tutorial on how to install Automatic 11.11 and here you see that from the 5 minutes and 16 seconds mark you can see how to install Python 3.10. The important thing is that you also install pip so that we can install the dependencies later. But first we'll create a virtual environment with Python, so Python and then we'll make a virtual environment and the name of the virtual environment can be for simplicity simply Ven. So enter, we see that the virtual environment folder has been created here and in PowerShell we should navigate and execute the activate.batch file here. So we could either type the subdirectory and the file name or we can simply go to properties and then we can go to security and copy this string here. And then we copy that one, cancel this, go back to PowerShell and then we paste this and enter to activate. My mistake, when we activate the virtual environment we should see here that the virtual environment is active as we evidently do not. That is because the batch file here is compatible with command prompt and not PowerShell. If we go back here, you see that there actually is a PowerShell script here. So we'll go back here, just press the up arrow to get as the non-executed input, the most recently executed input. And then we'll change this to a capital A and then the file extension to PS1 and then enter. And now we see here that the virtual environment has been activated. Having activated the virtual environment, we can continue. Let's go here to the NVIDIA segment, and then we can install the most frequently updated one here. Go back to PowerShell, right mouse button click, or Control V, and enter. There was a warning here about an error checking the latest version of PIP, but that is of no matter. We do not need the latest version of PIP to be able to successfully install Torch and Torch's dependencies. And now we should install the rest of the dependencies. If we go one directory up here to Venv and inside the lib subdirectory and site packages, we see here that Torch has been installed in the virtual environment and not in a system-wide directory. Very good. If we go to the installed root directory and we see that there is a requirements text file here. If we open this in notepad, we see here the list of dependencies that need to be installed. So we can go back to PowerShell and still with the virtual environment active, we can enter pip install everything in the requirements.txt file. This will install the dependencies. As previously stated, we do not need to upgrade pip, but we see that we have successfully installed all of the dependencies. That's very good. Now, since the virtual environment is already active, and this Python file is the one to be executed to start Comfy UI, we could actually just enter python main.py, 
But for this to function with the dependencies installed in the virtual environment, we would have to rely on the virtual environment already being active. And it might be cumbersome in the long run to start PowerShell, activate the virtual environment, and then execute this to start the actual user interface. So we can actually press escape. And then we can create a very simple batch file here. So let's create a new text document. It can be called start comfy ui.bat that is okay let's edit this one and then we can call in the subdirectory then virtual environment scripts and then we'll do the activate dot bat file instead of the powershell command since this start comfy ui batch file will be run by command prompt automatically and then the next thing we should do is simply python and main.py and then we can save this and then we can exit PowerShell and then we can try to double click this and it seems to work. And now the server has been started and we simply copy this URL and this does not need to be an SSL certificated connection simply due to the fact that this is your local computer. And here we have the comfy user interface. And this is a default set of nodes here. You have your chosen checkpoint, you have your positive prompt, you have your negative prompt. You have your sampler that uses the resolution of the latent image to denoise with the positive and a negative prompt and the checkpoint. You have the variational autoencoder decode which controls the actual color values of the output and then you save the image. This however will not work because if we see here the checkpoint name, if we click here we have undefined and we have not yet installed nor referenced any model checkpoints here. We will remedy this. So we can actually close this down, close this tab and also close this command prompt. So to populate your stable diffusion and extension models in Comfy UI you have the directory here models and here you have all of the relevant subdirectories where you put the checkpoints, the control net models, the LoRa's, the Vi, etc. But if you already have Automatic 11.11 or any other user interface installed and have populated that specific installation with all of these models, then you can actually go back here to the installation root. And then there is an example file here. We can actually make a copy of it, Control C, Control V. And then this copy, we can delete the example extension so that the new extension is .yaml. And enter, we want to change the file extension. And then this one we can open in a text editor. And then we see here that we can actually input the base path to the previously installed Stable Diffusion web user interface. In our case, the first user interface that we installed and have populated with models is the Vladmandic sd.next user interface. So we'll open this here in File Explorer. And here we can verify if we copy this directory here and exchange it here. Perhaps add a backslash there, or it actually was forward slash here, so let's do it consistently. So let's control H, find all backslashes, replace with forward slashes, and replace all. Then the checkpoints should be residing in models, stable diffusion, which is correct. The V should be in models V. The LoRa's should be in models LoRa, as well as models Lycoris. Upscale models should be in models Esgan and real Esgan, as well as Swinir, of which we did not have any. The embeddings are stated here to be in the primary subdirectory embeddings here, which it is not. So let's make sure that we change this. So it is models embeddings with a forward slash. And then let's see if we go back to models and control net. Yes, very good. That means that we should be able to save this, close this, start comfy UI again. We see here that we have extra search paths added. Let's go to the URL. And here we see checkpoint name is null. But now we have our previously downloaded checkpoints as well. So let's test out Dream Shaper 4 with a baked way. We can change the number of steps to 35 and the sampler type to dpm plus plus 2m and then the scheduler can be Keras. We can make sure that the negative prompt also includes not safe for work, any nudity or violence. And as for the positive prompt, we can, we can perhaps try to modify it. Beautiful scenery, Roman ruins, overgrown columns. And then we can simply click Q prompt and we see how it progresses. And here we have it. To open the image, simply do right mouse on the click and open image. 
and we have it here. You will also find all outputs in the output subdirectory. But as you see, this is a PNG, and while this singular image is only a little less than half a megabyte, when you generate hundreds of them, they will progressively accumulate a lot of storage. By default, ConfiUI only saves its output as PNG, but we can install ConfiUI Manager to manage extensions specifically for ConfiUI, and one of those extensions is the extended save image for ConfiUI, which allows to save as JPEG and also as web picture. So, if you follow the instructions here on Comfy UI Manager, we see that it's fairly simple, nothing more complex than we previously have done. The third step is to restart Comfy UI. I think we can already at this stage exit Comfy UI. Before doing that, we can save this workflow, and then the name of the workflow can be 240414 initial test. This can be loaded here, and this very same workflow will be loaded. Now we can exit and exit this as well. And then we'll follow the instruction here. So we'll go to the custom nodes subdirectory, custom nodes, and we can start a PowerShell window here, shift right mouse on the clicking, and then we can simply copy this and enter. And then we can exit. And we can go back to the installation route and go down to the start, Comfy UI, and we can start here. All right, and we can copy the URL and open it here. And here you see that we have the manager loaded. We can click manager here. And then we can simply install via git URL. So we can copy this and install and OK. And then since we rely on the virtual environment for this installation, we can, instead of clicking this button and restart, we can click this button, close and close and close. And then we can exit and start it again, just so as to make sure that the virtual environment is properly activated. Copy the URL. And now we should be able to right mouse on the click and add node and add an image node and add a save image extended node. And here we can change the file type to JPEG and then we can drag this here instead. As of now, it would probably save the very same image as a PNG and a JPEG. So we'll delete this with backspace, uh, move this here. We can save this workflow. 240414 underscore initial test JPEG. Okay. And then we can queue, and we see that the checkpoint was loaded, the prompt was loaded, the sample was doing, and the variational autodecoder made sure that the color output is correct. And here we have the image, and this is of course another image because the seed is set here to be randomized after each generation. So for each queuing and each generation, the seed value will change, and the latent image noise that each of the generated images are denoised from will thus be different. You of course see the similarities because of the very same checkpoint being used and the same positive and negative prompt. But since the latent image noise was different due to the seed being different, then it produced a different image of course. If we go to the output directory, we see that we have the image here, very good, and it's a fraction of the size of the PNG one. Although the images are not identical, they are very similar and identical in resolution. This concludes this tutorial on how to install Comfy User Interface for Stable Diffusion. Thank you for your time.